the Redmi 10. This device has been out quite a while, but you can pick it up fairly cheap now, and it's a very high spec device for the price, even at full price. Let's get it unboxed. Not much going on in the box, just got a few bits of information around the side. I'm not going to show you the bottom because it'll have the IMEI number, etc. So we'll just lift the lid. Got usual uh, Redmi type of boxing. So we've got a pull-out tray here, which we'll come back to in just a moment. The phone. Just pop that there. Then underneath, you can lift that tray out. And we've got a USB cable. USB-C one end, USB whatever it is on the other. And then we have the plug. So just looking at the uh, the details of the power adapter, it will do up to 22.5 watts maximum. So this phone supports 18 watts fast charge. So it more than covers that, plus some, but you won't gain the extra bit of mileage out of that charger. Inside the little tray, we've got the SIM tool as usual. And we've got quick start guide, warranty notice and a case. Always good with Xiaomi or Redmi phones or Poco phones that you tend to get a free case, which does the job quite marvelously. We have some of the highlights of what makes this phone special on the wrap around the phone. So we've got a 50 megapixel AI quad camera, dual speakers, NFC enabled. We've got a display that goes up to 90 Hertz, 6.5 inch full HD plus dot display with adaptive sync We've got a high performance MediaTek Helio G88 octa-core processor up to two gigahertz. And we've got a nice and generous 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is of course much higher capacity than you tend to get in cheap phones. And that supports up to 18 watts fast charging. All looking good so far. Let's peel that off the screen. There is a screen protector pre-applied to the device. It's not um, tempered glass or anything like that, but it, it will prevent your screen from scratching, which is nice to see. We'll just work our way around the phone and I'll just point out some of the features that it has. I've actually gone for the pebble white version of this phone and it is quite a nice looking device. Uh, I'm not really a big fan of uh, the manufacturer's name being plastered on the back of a phone, but it's fairly subtle on this one. Cameras on the back, it says AI cam photography system. So we've got your big 50 megapixel camera there and then you've got one, two, three more there and the flash. So they will do different things. So we do have a wide angle lens and a macro lens here and I believe we also have a depth sensor camera. And also on the front you've got the front facing camera so you can do your video calls, your selfies and other such like. Around the edges, so the top end you've got a headphone jack and you've got a speaker, microphone, and I believe that is an IR blaster, which is great to see. I know Redmi do tend to put those on there. You can control your TV, audio system, that kind of thing from directly in an app on the phone. Along the top, we've got volume rocker, and then we've got a fingerprint sensor, which is also the lock button. Along the bottom, we've got the second speaker, so we've got stereo sound, another microphone there, and USB-C for charging. And up the other side, just got the SIM tray. Look at the fingerprint unlock. So just on the side, got the lock button there that's also a fingerprint sensor. So we'll just test it with my thumb. And pretty good. Unlocks fairly quickly. And let's take a look at what goodies are hiding in the SIM tray. So just pop that out with the SIM tool. Like so, you let a little click. And what have we got? Lovely stuff. So we've got SD card or TF card as it says on here, and then dual SIM. And expandable storage is always nice to see. I'll just take a look at video playback. So I've put the screen on full brightness here. You will notice there's a lot of reflection uh, in, the, uh, in the display, hello. Uh, but that, that's not the end of the world. Uh, we could take the screen protector off. We might get slightly less glare. But it is a cheap phone, bear that in mind. So we've got this full volume as well, let's see what it's like. A really quick look at this TWS wireless speaker. Probably one of the cheapest wireless Bluetooth speakers. 
nice and loud. I'll just do my incredibly scientific stereo test to make sure it is stereo. So we've got a speaker on the left and the right. So I'm going to cover each one up in turn and see if we can still hear the audio. It's built in 1500 million. Cover that one up. For long battery life. Compact and lightweight. Part yep. Design. And then Two other way around. For stereo sound. Compatible with phone, computers, TV and more. In the box, USB cable. Perfect. And just a couple of things I want to show you about the UI. So this is the latest update, it's running my UI 12.5.16, hopefully we'll be getting 13 uh, at some point. And you'll see the, the occupied storage is quite high but I have uh, installed quite a few games on there so don't be alarmed by that. And you've also, you've seen that you can expand the storage. Android security update up to date to the 1st of May 2022. Fairly good. So there is a 5,000 milliamp hour battery in the device, uh, but the the processor is a 12 nanometer process uh, manufactured processor, so it will drain battery quite a bit. One thing you can do, you can set the refresh rates. So you can actually, if you're not that bothered about your battery draining fairly quickly, you can have a extended high refresh rate of 90 hertz. So the display will actually refresh 90 times a second or you can go to the standard 60 hertz. So if you find your battery is draining, then you can drop that down to 60 hertz. It doesn't give you a smooth an experience. With it on 90, as you can see, it's a very liquid experience. Very nice to see on a device at this price. Some 3D gameplay now. So first up, Genshin Impact. You can see this is running. Um, the graphics are quite clearly set low with a lot of jagged edges around or some pretty low poly items in the background. A little bit of stutter, uh, but it is playable if you can cope with a long loading time. So storage isn't particularly quick on this device, uh, which doesn't help. We have Call of Duty Mobile now. So again, low settings, but it works. Very playable. Doesn't look too bad either, considering that the settings are set to low. And now a little bit of Minecraft. So the Mali G52 MC2 GPU shouldn't be any issue for this whatsoever. Minecraft is actually quite an old game, relatively speaking, despite it being still very popular. Uh, no issues here. This looks pretty uh, slick and the gameplay experience is very good. And again, the same with a bit of Roblox. Should not be a problem for this hardware and does seem to be running okay. So if you're looking for something for the kids that you're not too bothered about because it's quite a cheap device, then this phone is definitely one to consider. Rather frustrating thing I did find with the phone is in the background, it seems to aggressively close down programs. So for example, you're in Chrome and you're wanting to switch between Chrome and another app. Sometimes what you'll find is if you've got a web page loaded up in Chrome that requires data being sent to it, you switch to the other app and then you come back to Chrome and it's lost where you were, which can be really annoying. If, for example, you're booking cinema tickets and you're getting a voucher code from another app. However, there are ways of turning this off. Uh, in the settings, you can set each app as to whether or not the UI decides to close it and you can completely switch it off so you can make sure that it does get stored in RAM. Now I understand why Redmi, Xiaomi do this uh, and that is because by aggressively closing apps it keeps your battery going for longer and that's kind of doing you a good service. But sometimes it is impractical and it does get very annoying. There's a little bit of bloatware on, on the device, some games, that I've got rid of most of them uh, but that doesn't really matter, you can uninstall them, they're not forced upon you. Uh, it's just a minor inconvenience. Now if you just look at some of the results of the camera on the device. So it does pick out quite a lot of detail depending on which camera you do use. Um, this here is just a, a video clip which is just showing you how without image stabilization it is a little bit all over the place. The light, it doesn't seem to react particularly well to changes in light. And here we've got 50 megapixel mode and I'll just zoom in around the image uh, just to show you the level of detail you get. So this is just looking above a lovely market town in West Yorkshire. 
If you know what it is, then please do let us know in the comments. I obviously do. Quite nice levels of detail on some of the shots, but others not so great. The AI mode does tend to know that you are taking photos of animals, that kind of thing, and it does adjust the shot appropriately. Great for sunset images. Unfortunately, I've not got any on here. Macro mode is okay. This is just an image of a sunflower. And as you can see, it's pulled out quite a lot of detail. We've got a, a little bee on another sunflower here and his little pal, a fly. And just to give you an idea, some other shots of flowers. Does have quite a nice portrait mode where you can blur the background, pulls out the detail on your face. This is a front facing camera up to 1080p, 30fps, no digital image stabilisation. Audio quality sounds alright as you can hear uh, and it does seem to be picking up a decent amount of colours. Just produce okay results for if you're vlogging, that kind of thing. If posting portrait videos is more your bag, i.e. TikTok, YouTube Shorts etc. then Make sure you get a tripod, the slightest nudge with your hand and it goes all over the place. No digital image stabilisation. So in conclusion, I do really like this phone. For the price you get a stylish looking device with lots of features, lots of cameras, with mixed results. But you're not going to get the same results as you do on a phone that costs upwards of £500, £600 or dollars. Um, so it is nice to see some decent results out of this. Battery life is okay. Turn down the uh, refresh rate if you're not happy with it and you'll get a lot more mileage out of it. Everything seems to work as it should, like the fingerprint sensor for example. Tons and tons of storage expansion options. A little bit disappointed that there's no image stabilisation on the camera, but what do you expect for this price? It'll be very interesting to see if Xiaomi do push out the MyUI 13 to this device. It would be a nice addition, some lovely additional features in there, although I do understand that with the lower spec of this device, some of that may not land. I personally wouldn't pay full price for this at the moment, but they do keep putting on offer uh, at around $100, £100. Uh, well worth the money at that price. Anything above 150 not so sure, but it is a year old now, this device. Things have moved on. I hope you found my review informative and useful. If you could just help me out by hitting subscribe and or like, then please do so. And if you've got any comments, then please do add them below. And I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching.